Hello, I'm John with Roadkill Incorporated, where you can sell me your broken MacBook, you can buy a refurbished MacBook, you can ask me hardware-related repair questions for free, and you can do all that at rdklinc.com, uh, roadkillincorporated.com. And today, um, I'm doing something a little different. Um, I've been strolling down memory lane a little bit and revisiting the computers that I had as a kid. And um, yeah, as you can see here, I have accumulated some Amigas and I want to talk about them a little bit because I find it interesting. Um, so yeah, this is an Amiga 500. It's taken apart, as you can see, the shielding is off. Um, that's what the shielding looks like. And then the casing is obviously off too. So, so that's kind of what it looks like together. And uh, yeah, so the Amiga 500 came out in the late 80s, um, came with 512K of RAM. Uh, that's kilobytes, not megabytes, 512K. And then there was sort of a trap door underneath the keyboard um, there. And you would get at that slot from under the computer, typically not by <laughs> opening the computer up and taking out the keyboard. Um, that card would typically give you another 512K uh, for a whopping total of one megabyte. And uh, it would typically have a clock calendar on it too. So uh, if you got that expansion card, then your computer could keep time. Imagine that. Um, one thing to keep in mind, if you do get uh, a, a, an Amiga, an old Amiga, um, especially of the 2000s, 3000s, 4000s, is you want to take out that uh, battery out of the clock, um, or well, the battery that controls the clock, because it, with time it corrodes, over the decades it corrodes and it can damage your computer. So you want to take that battery out. So uh, anyway, the Amiga, a little bit about this computer. Uh, Amigas have a two-part operating system. They have Kickstart and then they have Workbench. Kickstart is generally a ROM. Um, it controls kind of the underlying functions of the computer. I don't recall which of these is a kickstart, but it's probably one of those. Uh, and then Workbench is kind of like Windows. Um, you know, it, it's the software that the, the computer runs on, uh, like Windows or Mac OS. So kickstart started at 1.2 and then 1.3 and then I think 2.0 and then 3.0. Uh, this has 1.3. Most 500s have 1.3. I'm going to get something... Um, that's called a Kickstart Switcher, which is a single ROM that has all of the Kickstart versions on it, and then it's got a cord that comes out, and you can flip a switch, and it'll switch the Kickstart version, which is pretty cool. Um, I, um, yeah, and let's see, something similar to that. There's so many neat mods for these computers. Uh, this is a PAL and NTSC switcher. This was added to this computer. It was soldered on. You can see right there. And so this switches between NTSC and PAL modes. Um, two different uh, video standards, I think. Uh, NTSC is, was big in the US, PAL is big in Europe. Uh, some games were written for one or the other, so it's uh, of benefit to be able to switch between the two. Um, another mod to this machine is the Flicker Fixer, this, this guy here. Um, kind of cool. I wanted one of those when I was a little kid, but it was 300 bucks, so it wasn't an option. Um, what that does is, uh, well, basically the Amiga has some low resolutions and then it has some high resolutions. And the higher resolutions in older Amigas uh, were achieved by interlacing uh, two video modes, I believe, to achieve the effect of a higher resolution, but the uh, byproduct of that was you got a flickering screen. And through some feat of magic, this flicker fixer, um, well, it fixes it. Um, so that's pretty cool. One thing I never realized a long time ago is that the flicker fixer actually gives you a separate video out. Like this cable here, it's, it's got a VG, VGA connector and that connects to this monitor. So it can, the flicker fixed video can connect to any standard VGA monitor. And then you have the, the regular proprietary um, Amiga video connection going to the standard Amiga monitor. So um, yeah, I'll show you how that works. So I'll power it on. 
the 500 has this crazy brick thing. There's the Flickr Fixer's splash screen. Um, it's kind of hilarious that it has a splash screen. You can already see the flickering on the, uh, the standard monitor over there, I think. Um, and this thing's going to take a little while to get going because it's got some uh, add-ons here. So I'll tell you about the add-ons. So Amiga 500s have a bus port on the side, which you can use to expand the machine, um, you know, by adding uh, a card or an expansion device. Typically, you'd, you'd add RAM. Uh, you could add a SCSI controller and a hard drive. Um, some, sometimes you could expand the processor uh, with by adding an additional processor to the side of the computer. So typically the expansions here would be sort of a beige box that plug in that plugs into the side. Um, the guy I got this from um, was pretty creative. He took this slot, th this this card, which is actually an Amiga 2000 card that goes in that, and he sort of concocted this little gizmo and soldered the pins to this board. And so basically it's an Amiga 2000 card that is able to work on a 500 through this uh, connector. So this card is a GVP Series 2 card, uh, Great Valley Products, a uh, very common uh, uh, company, uh, a company that made lots and lots of expansion devices for Amigas. So uh, this card has eight megabytes of RAM, again, not gigabytes, megabytes. So this computer has a total of nine megabytes. Then this is a SCSI controller um, SCSI being the old uh, hard drive interface that we used back in the day. And then um, you can use this cable to connect to multiple hard drives. So here's a big old crazy quantum, I think it's a one gigabyte hard drive, possibly. Um, so I could connect these antique hard drives to the cable, and then this machine would have access to those drives. Um, yeah, sort of a, a Frankenstein situation. Um, but, uh, what else? Okay, so now we're booted. You can see this video is, this screen is not flickering, but that one is. Um, what else can I tell you? So, external floppy drive, you pretty much want, wanted an external floppy drive back in the day, because, uh, the system, uh, the workbench, had to boot off the internal drive, and so if you wanted to do anything else, either you got an external drive so you could have two drives going at once, or you would spend all day, you know, swapping uh, disks back and forth, which was a pain. Um, it wasn't very common to have a hard drive situation, uh, especially early on with the Amiga 500. Um, but the, the 500 was an amazing computer, or, well, the Amigas were amazing computers. They were the first computer, I believe, to have coprocessors aside from the main processor. So now you have the common situation where um, everyone knows you have, you know, a, a main processor and then you have the system RAM and then you have a graphics processor and you have graphics memory, the GPU's memory. Well, the Amiga was kind of the first, first um, home computer to employ that strategy. You know, previous to that, you just had a main processor and uh, and the system RAM, and they controlled everything. So when you wanted to do different things, uh, they all had to wait in line for the same processor and the same memory. Whereas Amigas, uh, they have a bunch of coprocessors, including the graphics processor, that have their own memory bank. So they were able to multitask. Uh, because you had the main processor and then also the other processors doing the same thing, doing different things at the same time. So long explanation there. But um, what else can I show you? Uh, so this is an another hack that is very common. So this Amiga's uh, floppy drive has been replaced with something called a GoTech. I think GoTech is the brand. And actually, I don't think this is an official... GoTech brand. I think it's a third-party brand. But what that is, is a, it's a floppy drive replacement um, that gives you a USB port. So I think that's like a 32 gig, uh, you know, uh, USB drive there. So you can basically put every piece of software that was ever created for the Amiga on a modern day flash drive, stick it in there, um, and then it boots up to 
a simplified OS that is housed on this thing and it lets you pick uh, whatever software from the list you want. So pretty cool modern hack uh, for one of these ancient computers. So anyway, uh, I might do a, another video or two on other of these machines that I have or other you know elements of them that I discovered, but I just wanted to uh, throw this out there because I'm having fun with these crazy old computers. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you found this amusing. And uh, again, if you want to sell me a broken computer, a broken MacBook specifically, go to rdklinc.com and I'll talk to you later. Thanks.